Welcome once again to another rip-roaring, fire-breathing, thatch-roof, cottage-destroying episode of What Happened, the show where we ride deep and hard on top of those disastrous developmental stories your mama warned you about. Wait, did I use that line once before? Where we peer deep into the mists of time and bring to light the troubled development of games and movies your mama warned you about. Nah, I don't think I did. Anyway, game fans across the world and their respective mamas all wept openly and freely when in January of 2017, Microsoft and Platinum Games announced the cancellation of one of the most anticipated Xbox One games of all time, Scalebound. Yeah, Yes, the original, wildly ambitious, single-player online co-op action RPG that ran on a brand new engine, relied on AI-controlled partners, and was Platinum's first time working on a large-scale project with an overseas publisher, and when you look back on a descriptor like that, you can start to see why the whole thing fell apart. Now, the road to get to said falling apart dates back far more than most may realize. Not only was Scalebound an anticipated big budget release from Platinum that appealed to both fantasy fans and their regular hardcore cheering section, it was an idea that had been gestating since 2006. Yes, during the earliest of early days, the DNA strands of Scalebound started forming the very same month Platinum was founded, and was a good deal off from what would eventually be unveiled some eight years later. Scalebound's director and Windex enthusiast Hideki Kamiya spoke about the game's origins in an interview with GameSpot back in 2015. When we first started, the idea was for a Wii game, and we wanted to use the Wii Remote to order around dinosaurs. You were in control of the dinosaurs, and they'd do cool things. Then, after we made Bayonetta, we started the full prototype. The first thing that I made a change to was making it a dragon game. At that point, the lead character was even weaker than current protagonist Drew is. In the context of Scalebound, she was actually a little girl. As we were making the prototype, I realized that I didn't want to just be watching the fight, I wanted to be a participant. And I started talking with the staff about how maybe we should change this to be a swordsman or someone a little bit older. Wait, Kamiya wanted to make a game based around a sword? Yeah, that makes sense. Not long after Platinum started establishing itself as a force to be reckoned with in the gaming industry due to critical hits like Bayonetta, Metal Gear Rising, and Vanquish, that Microsoft, always slavering and clawing for any exclusive Japanese support they could get, came knocking on Platinum's doors. Their then forthcoming console, the Xbox One, was set to release at the end of 2013, and it's here when the massive Western conglomerate and the small Japanese developer slammed their heads together to see what they could collaborate on. And with Kamiya wrapping up his duties on the wonderful 101, he was keen to return to that dragon game idea from so long ago. And that little prototype, whom nobody liked, grew up to be scalebound. Whoa! Whoa! Two years later, at Microsoft's 2014 E3 presser, amongst a few solid but not particularly exciting announcements, classic Microsoft, they decided to erupt all over the stage with their Big Get, an exclusive Platinum Games game that looked equally stylish and ambitious, and could be, you know, sold fairly easily to most action game fans by simply saying, Dragon May Cry. The game followed Drew, a cocky young white haired protagonist that was legally distinct, the best type of distinct, from Capcom's Nero, and teamed up with dragon friend Thuban to burninate the countryside of Draconis. The game was exactly what Microsoft needed, which was uh, anything to break up the almost yearly grind of a new Gears, Halo, or Forza. From the outset, Scalebound promised a lot. The fun and style of Platinum Games, cutting-edge graphics, an AI partner that can be left to its own devices or be given commands, controlling said AI directly which switches the perspective to first person, semi-open world design, three different dragon variants which could be combined and customized, armor for both Drew and Thuban, being able to upgrade Ray Drew separately with various skills as well as his multiple melee-based weapons, being able to transform into a half
half man, half dragon hybrid, which you can see in this artist's rendering. Last Trogdor reference, I swear. And even more gameplay aspects I won't even go into here. There are also flying sections on top of Thuban, four player online co-op, NPCs, quests, towns, and all running on the then brand new Unreal 4. The first <laughs> and last time Platinum would ever use a Western developed engine. So yeah, Scalebound promised a lot. This was without a doubt the biggest, most complicated title they ever or have ever worked on. And during this critical phase of development, it wasn't the only iron they had in the fire. From the time of its formal announcement to the time of its cancellation, Platinum Games released four other titles, all of them being much more straightforward in design. In fact, if you look at their back catalog, all of their games were laser focused on one or two main ideas and they were then fleshed out appropriately. This is one of the many factors that inevitably led to the project's downfall, feature creep, which has felled many a quality studio. Now, not only was this a Platinum game, it was a Kamiya directed Platinum game whose past efforts are so famous that I'm not even going to bring them up. He's an outspoken character whose confidence is only outweighed by his Twitter block list. So as early as the game's debut in 2014, he aired out his concerns fairly publicly about having to collaborate with an overseas partner. Up until now, the style of Japanese publishers I've worked with is the good old days of game development. To be blunt, their vibe is as long as it works out in the end. Now, Microsoft is the first overseas publisher I've worked with, but it seems like the overseas style is, for better or worse, all about next generation game development. It is focused not just on the final result, but also on the whole process you take to get there. For someone as irresponsible as I am, it's hard to get my head around sometimes. When you boil down that statement, you're left with the fact that Microsoft, spending so much money and highlighting this as one of their biggest titles, would then regularly check on the product and give feedback during the entire process, far more than Kamiya was probably accustomed to. Now, if you were working on something that's more focused and of a smaller scope, this might all be unneeded. Just leave them to it, they, they, yeah, they, they know what they're doing, but with so many tenants to the gameplay and various other considerations and concerns, both technical and design in nature, it probably needed all hands on deck every step of the way. Skillbound was scheduled to release in 2016, but completely skipped the previous year's E3 entirely, which in retrospect was probably an early red flag. However, the biggest reddest flag was that after a pretty quiet 2015, Microsoft and Platinum announced a massive year-long delay. The very moment the calendar rolled over to 2016, Scalebound was now 2017 bound, which also meant it was going on five full years of development. Microsoft VP Aaron Greenberg stated, as we're looking at the lineup for this year and where the team at Platinum Games are with Scalebound and what their aspirations are, we want to be able to give them enough time and resources to do that. So strategically, give it time to breathe. Let's make sure we can give it enough space. First and foremost, always make sure that the game is great. That last bit's gonna be real important. However, even as these months ticked by and the game made more appearances at both E3 and Gamescom, there were some uh, growing concerns. The four-player demo that was shown at E3 was, um... The show is opening up! Hit the pink out thing! kind of fucking rough. It highlighted a lot of mechanics and crazy four-player action that wasn't the easiest to sift through. It still wasn't 100% clear what you did in this game, aside from fight alongside all your dragon buddies. The Gamescom demo, which emerged just a few months later, as stated in online previews, was marred by an unstable frame rate, blurry visuals, and some wonky animations. Not exactly surprising for a game that was still in development, but there were only a few months left left in the year by this time. Now, deep within the foggy opium dens of the private demos that would go on behind closed doors at industry events like this, paint a very different picture. Platinum were happy to show off just how much depth the game had, outside of combat and online multiplayer functionality. There were extensive customizable options, letting you swap out dragon parts for, say, better flight or more damage.
damage, along with oodles of armor combinations that would alter gameplay and appearance. Not to mention towns, quests, and NPCs, all stuff the general public never really saw. The big glitzy E3 presentations focused on that combat, the spectacle, and the online play, but the backstage stuff hosted by Kamiya and the producer on the Platinum side, JP Kellums, were more concerned with showing off the RPG of this action RPG. It's about here where you start to see a divide starting to form. This was a very different game to what Platinum had made before, which they seemed to relish, whereas in the marketing of Scalebound on the Microsoft side took a different tact. It's safe to assume this divide found itself into the day-to-day -day development, which as you can imagine, when working with Hideki, fuck you Sega, the glasses ain't coming off Kamiya, led to some friction. We are now getting towards the end of 2016, and it's been reported that both parties agreed to sit down and take a long, hard look at Scalebound to review all aspects and would then consider where to go from there. Even with months and months of all that extra work, the clashing views on the game's focus, Kamiya's directing style, the pressure of making the first game of this scale, and the really obvious technical hurdles Unreal 4 was presenting, it's not really a surprise that both companies decided it might be better to go their separate ways. Uh, actually, wait, no, it is a surprise. Like many, like 98% of the stories we covered here and what happened usually result in a director or publisher or producer going, ah, all right, just fuck, fuck it. Make sure the game can be completed and that the Chivos pop. And that's certainly something that even Microsoft <coughs> has done before. But here, if they reached a true creative impasse that couldn't be rectified, well then it's admirable for both of them to say, well, maybe this ain't it. With that said, though, you have to assume that Microsoft had considered handing the reins of development over to someone else, as they did own the IP, but probably thought better of it in the end. Platinum has a very passionate and vocal fan base, and the idea that someone else would be continuing their work would probably result in backlash and a bias against Scalebound, no matter how good it might have turned out to be. Even though this undoubtedly hard decision wouldn't be made public until January 2017, reports started to bubble to the surface as early as December, with the word cancelled certainly being thrown around. Stress, however, was another big story around this time as both Kamiya and J.P. Kellums were cited to have asked for a month off of development duties due to stress. While those stories were certainly never 100% confirmed, especially in regards to Kamiya, J.P. Kellums, who had been with Platinum since the very beginning, quit the company less than two months after the cancellation and was quite open on Twitter about the aftermath. That game literally burnt me out, put me in therapy, disappointed me, made me learn a ton, pushed me to try new things and new places, all sorts of positives and negatives. But what it didn't do is give anyone on the internet any clue what they are talking about. Fans were quick to throw stones at Microsoft for all of this, which is fair, but also probably a bit unfair. Everyone wanted to make a great game, everyone wanted this to succeed, and despite all the years of work and the millions of dollars, they just couldn't make it happen. Platinum Games founder and producer Atsushi Anaba also got real with fans who were angry and looking to assign blame, as fans tend to do. Both sides failed. Watching fans get angry at Microsoft over the cancellation wasn't easy for us to watch. The reality is, when any game in development can't get released, it's because both sides failed. I think there are some areas where we could have done better, and I'm sure there are some areas that Microsoft, as a publishing partner, wish they could have done better also because nobody wants a game to be cancelled. The truth is, we don't like to see Microsoft take the brunt of fan ire because game development is hard and both sides learnt lessons for sure. As the next year or two rolled around, people did detect some scale-bound death gurgles on the wind. Microsoft re-upped the copyright for the game, which always seems to be a newsworthy thing despite it being an incredibly common practice within the industry. Nintendo regularly does the same with eternal darkness and sanity effects. 
and I'm still waiting for that! Then, in February of 2019, a rumor surfaced from Nintendo Insider that claimed Scalebound was being resurrected as a Switch exclusive, which would have been an impossibility since Microsoft owned the IP and it had just re-upped the copyright in their own name. Now, this rumor probably spawned from two particular sources. One, Nintendo had already once before resurrected a Platinum IP in Bayonetta, which Sega had no interest in continuing, and two, that same February of 2019, Nintendo would then go on to announce Astral Chain, which has a few similarities with Scalebound, what well, with being linked to an AI-controlled partner and all. Inaba, however, was quick to point out that Astral Chain had started development five years previous, and wasn't a retooling of the concept. Oh, by the way, while I have you all here, buy Astral Chain! Ever since then, things have stayed quiet on the Scalebound front, and while Platinum employees have since stated they would love to resume work on it, ultimately, it's not their call. Just as recently as April of this year, Phil Spencer spoke frankly regarding the game in an interview with IGN. I have a ton of respect for Kamiya-san on everyone at Platinum, and I feel no ill will. And we talked to those guys. There's no animosity between us. We tried to go do something, and it didn't work. I regret that we were as public with what we tried to do, though. I learned about going public about things before I know we have a real believable plan, something that I felt in my hands and I know is gonna be there, and we just didn't get there with Scalebound. We love some of the ideas that we were trying to do, and obviously, we wanted to be able to ship a great game to our customers. Every time we start a game, that's our end goal, so of course we're going to be a little upset we weren't able to deliver on those goals. We're not working on it, it's something we've all moved past, and it's not a moment that I see as a high point for me in my role, having to cancel a game that we've talked about for years. So yeah, for the people out there that think something is still in the works, there's not. Ugh, bittersweet for sure, but at least we're left to simply wonder about a game's lost potential rather than argue or lament over a rushed, divisive product, as there's plenty of those to go around. And if you have any memories locked deep within your mind palace of a particular game, movie, or etc., roar it out in the comments below or fly on over to the Flophouse VIP Patreon to nominate the subject of our next episode. See you next time, and thanks for watching. Dragon Man! I mean, it was just a dragon! Um, but it was still a dragon!